The stats weren't arrogant, he was just grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> like a big grumpy no. <laughs> What were your thoughts about Les Kellett? Oh, Mr. Kellett, oh yes. Hard man. Very mm. hard man. And uh, most people frightened of him, you know. 90% of the rest of these, you know, these light sort of people were scared of him. Because he, he had a terrible reputation. I mean, this reputation went around that he'd bitten somebody's ear off and he rammed somebody in a radiator and burnt all the face of him. Yeah. And, uh, you know, reputation sometimes works, doesn't it? Yeah. Whether it was true or not, I don't know. <laughs> but a lot of people thought it was. And, I mean, the story was told lost enough, perhaps it was. And people were genuinely scared of him. I mean, genuinely scared of him. That he would do some sort of... If you retaliated with him, he might do, go you know, beyond the pale. Les, was all, Les, even when he was in his twilight zone, twilight years, he, he still had this thing, he'd got to be tough. And he'd got to, you know, got to take, and take the punishment. Yeah. I've got to give Leslie's due, he would take it as well as give it. I had a match, I, I had a match with him um, for uh, Dale Martins. I'm almost certain it was the first time I ever wrestled him. And we're down south somewhere, it's first Monday. Get to the show, who are we? Let's kill it. Oh, really? That's interesting. Mick Matt Manners is the promoter, isn't it? Or the matchmaker, he wasn't the promoter. Jack Dale and the Dale Martin. Right. Leslie's sitting there in, in there, because Les always used to sit in the dressing room, no shoes on, no underpants on, all on show, so we'd intimidate the young lads, you see. <laughs> so a tough guy like you, look at the side. <laughs> like, okay. So he's sitting there like that, and I've got to, I am, you know, you're all right, you know. What are we going to do? He said, well, my, my, my show's comedy, isn't it? Like, you know, so, right, okay, all right, all right. What are we going to do? So we, we, we say, we'll do this, and we'll do this, and we'll do this. We get him there. And uh, that's in the way. First, th this was, I think it was the second round. No, it's the first round. First three minutes were okay. Then he does, you know that thing he does like and he gets you in, in the yeah. And he runs round, he goes, doop, 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 doop. and he comes back and he goes, boom, and kicks you in the back. He's, he's, he's wound me in this thing and he's whispering me, trust your uncle Les. I thought, I'm sitting there like a fool, aren't I? On my knees. He does the trot round, he boots me in the back of the back, and then he swallowed my tonsils. My teeth went up, oh, God, that, you bastard! <laughs> <laughs> and I jumped up. I jumped up. The candle jumped up. <laughs> I jumped up and hit him. And he hit me back. And we ended up having this sort of stand up fight in the ring. Not wrestling, but more like a street fight. You know, he, he's hitting me and I'm hitting him. It went on to the, the rest of that round. We came out in the next round, it went on again. Same thing. We never settled down to any show whatsoever. And about two or three minutes into that round, he said, throw me in the ropes, we're going on. So I threw him in the ropes. He did this thing where he goes in the ropes, misses the top rope, fell out, went on his head. But then, didn't get back in the ring. Uh, I'm the winner. Get back in the dressing room. Uh, Les is getting ready in this night. He said to me, he said, that's how I like it, Ard. I said, don't worry, Les, that's how it's going to be. Anyway. He went back home, then I went into Dale Martin's the next day. So they had the big offices on, what was it, the Brixton? Was it Brixton, 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 Brixton. They had this big building. Yeah, on, Brixton, Brixton, Brixton. Brixton. on the ground floor they had a gym with a wrestling ring in it. The next floor was the offices, and then on the top floor was the publicity part. The, the middle floor there used to be a, a camp guy called Tony who worked there. And as I walked in this day, and I walked in, I'm like, said, Ooh, what have you been up to there? <laughs> he said, we've had Les Kelly in here this morning, he said. He said, he's had Mick old. Heavy net. <laughs> <laughs> and he's threatened to <coughs> push him on with you. He'll come here and he'll kick some cans and whatnot, have we? And I said, well, where's he gone? He's bugging off home. He said, he's, he's working for us all week and he's gone. And I don't think I wrestled Les again for an awful long time. I think, I, I, I can't remember that I did. But that was the Les Kelly and me, we didn't. But I will give Les his due. Whenever Les talked about Kendall Nagasaki, he always said that Kendall Nagasaki was good. And he always said that Kendall Nagasaki was, you know, one of the, the, tough, the tough guys in there. And Les didn't give that sort of to compliment easy. He didn't. And if you, two or three times he said to people that I was a, you know, that Kendall could, you know, Called to to, uh, to justice if need be.